Hey, good evening or morning or afternoon, whatever time, wherever you are that it is. This is your girl, Tracy Williams with Inspiring Hope, encouraging you to have only what? Positive expectations through true self-care. Now we know that sometimes we go through stuff, that's this thing called life, right? But even though we go through and things might not be perfect, we can still have positive expectations. When we truly take care of ourselves, when we truly love on ourselves, and today I got a treat for you guys. This is truly a treat, and I think this is a, a great timing that I met Simon. Simon hashtag Simon says I gotta gotta say that <laughs> we just kind of joking right before this started, but I just I love the fact of what he does and why he does it and how he's so passionate about it. And I just want you to meet him and see like. Like I saw, when you when you find your passion, when you find the thing that you love to do, you kind of it's kind of like you're really not working. You're just doing what you love to do, and you're helping people along the way. And that's what we got to do, right? We all keep saying we're in this together, and we are. So here we go. A true person that is really in it for you to win it. His name is Simon Later. Oh yes, I like that. And it's spelled L A D E R. No, and y'all know how I am about um, people that are out from another country and their accents. Oh, this I, I love Canadian accent too, but I love this as well. So come on, Simon, take it away for us. <laughs> Say a little to people. Good afternoon, Tracy. <laughs> how are you? <laughs> <laughs> yes, Tracy, you fall in love with my British accent. I'm originally from Manchester, England. But uh, right now I'm living in Las Vegas, Nevada. And as far as I'm aware, every everybody in Las Vegas speaks like this, or at least the people I speak to every day. So, uh, yeah, I'm originally from Great Britain. Awesome. I love it. So I'll tell you, you guys a little bit about Simon. Simon later, right? He uh, began his career way back in 1997 as a headhunter. And so if you are looking for a job, if you are looking for your the next best thing and what you should do when you transition into 2021, Simon Says is the man to talk to. You know, he's the, his company is the one to look for. Even if you're looking for your dream, uh, I wouldn't say mate, but your dream mate when it comes to should you do a job, just over broke, that's what I call it, or do you want to get a business or want to be in business? And how do you find those things out? You know, and then how do you determine, okay, so what type of business should I be in? So I can't wait till you guys hear from him and his creative ideas, his witty invention, the amount of things that he's come up with. So let me tell you a little bit more, right? He's co-founder of Celeste Human Capital and his hometown, right? His hometown is in Manchester, right? Not Okay, so that was, so he, he founded this in 2005, right? So then he moved to guess where of all places in the United States, Las Vegas, y'all, right? So he's taking the gamble. You know, he's first he's out here head hunting, and then now he's like taking the gamble, goes to Las Vegas, starts up a business, and uh, which I think is fantastic. In 2013, he opened up Salasi's U.S. office, and the company continued to enjoy uh, steady growth every year. That says a lot. So in late 2019, he co-founded Celeste Academy. And this is where I come in and I love um, where he, he progresses from one thing to the next thing, but it all streamlines together. And I think that's awesome because that's when you see people have found their passion and they're doing it and they're doing it well. And that's what you want to be able to follow, right? So nothing wrong with copycatting as long as you copy the right cat. That's why I, yeah, I said it here. Ain't nothing wrong with copycatting. Copy the right cat, right? So we don't always have to reinvent the wheel. If you are not sure what to do in your life right now, and I know a lot of people are going through this, like, man, you know, it's the end of the year. This year was not all that great, and da 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 da, blah blah blah. Have only positive expectation. Go see Simon. Do what Simon says, and you'll be all right because <laughs> he's got a track record. <laughs> so he, he's got a good track record there. So so that's the academy. They, their passion is in coaching and educating people on how to find the right job and improve the chances of getting that job. And if you find somebody who has done that for such a long time, then you, your chances are not just getting the job, but continuing and keeping that job, <clears throat> maintaining it well, and being the best at it. So Simon is a key, keen single Matt Whiskey collector and a fan of the soccer team Manchester United. <laughs> <laughs> this this is funny right here. I love it. <laughs> so, 
So, you know, he says that their failure to win the English Premier League is because he left Manchester. Mm -mm -mm. He takes full responsibility of it. I know, right? <laughs> Simon has left the country, and so things are not going to go <laughs> the way that they should. <laughs> I love it, Simon. This is awesome. And Simon also has some really great things coming up. So I guess you want to uh, stay tuned so you can uh, learn about those opportunities that are coming up and really know where you fit in. So welcome to the show, Simon. It's a pleasure to have you here. It's a pleasure to meet you and just chat it up with you for a little bit. I just I just love talking to you the other day. It was pretty cool. Thank you, Tracy. It's so lovely for you to have me here. Thank you very much. You're more than welcome. So tell me, how did you get into this whole... Um, thing with, with headhunting and helping people find what they need to sustain life, period. That, that's a great question. Okay, so basically, I I opened my first business when I was 22, uh, and it was selling car alarm. And what? basically, I've been doing that for about 18 months, very successfully, and I actually got bought out by a competitor. And I was 22, 23 wasn't sure what to do. And in that summer, I was involved in a very serious car accident. And uh, we didn't talk about this on Tuesday, uh, last week, did we? I don't <laughs> know. It's all new to you. So I, um, so my, my buddy Mark and I were driving on the freeway at two o'clock in the morning on the way home from a, a, from a close friend's wedding. And suddenly the wheel came off the front of the car, literally, right? So the car, on the freeway, started spinning around, cars vroom, vroom, left and right. And at one point, we were driving across the face of traffic because it was kind of like dodging to avoid us. And then my friend Mark, who was driving, he managed to steer the car into the side uh, crash barrier, and the car eventually stopped. And the car was totally like just destroyed. And the only injury that we that we sustained was a small graze to Mark's knee, okay? Wow. And I remember I came away from that, and a few days later, I know this is going to sound a bit kind of like, Woo, but a few days later, I had a dream. And in that dream, it, I, I vividly remember this, that I, in this dream, I was in a room, and people who I didn't really recognize were all kind of talking in the background. And then this man came up to me, um, who I recognized from old photographs as being my my mother's father who died when I was very young. And he came to me and he said to me, you were meant to die in that car accident, but we decided to give you another chance. Okay. So I woke up and um, shortly after that was when I, I sold uh, I sold the car on business. And I was thinking, well, life isn't a dress rehearsal. You only get one shot at this. And I want to make my life... I want to devote my life to doing something that really matters. I want to make I want to make a difference, okay? And I I had no real idea of what I wanted to do, right? So then I went through the newspaper um, one evening, having when I saw my business. I went through the newspaper looking for job opportunities and business opportunities because I didn't really know what I wanted to do. I mean, I had money in the bank, but not enough to retire at twenty three. So um, I then I went to uh, I went to uh, an interview with a job agency, not really knowing what a job agency was or what it did, but just thinking that they seemed to be advertising the kind of jobs that I could do in sales and marketing, the kind of things that I'd done in my own business. And I met this uh, I met this guy who turned out to be the CEO of the company, and he and I just got on really really well. And at the end of the conversation, he said to me, "Well, we're hiring here." Do you want a job here? And I said, yeah, I mean, I, I get on with you, you know, and, and I think I can really learn from you. But tell me what exactly is it that you guys do here? So he said, well, we help people find jobs. And it was just one of those moments in time where everything just came, came into focus. And it was like, this is what I'm meant to do. Yeah. And that's what I've devoted the rest of my professional career to doing. That is incredible. And what a thing to do because, um, you know, without money, who can really survive? <laughs> you know, Absolutely. yeah. Absolutely. You know, people, people always need jobs. Right. Um, and, you know, companies need to hire the right people. And it's one of those things where if it's done right, I mean, I, my, 
I, I have primarily two sides to my two sides to my working life. Okay, one side is in Silesia Human Capital, which is my executive headhunting and search business. Okay, and the other side is the academy. We'll talk about the academy in a second. But on the executive search business, basically, I am hired by um, by uh, technology companies, software companies, that sort of thing, to find um, senior people for them. Yeah, vice president level, um, uh, chief uh, chief level people, right? And when it works, everybody wins. It's one of those fantastic win-win-win situations because the company gets the person they really need to move them to the next level, and the individual wins because they get a job that's going to take them to the next level. Okay, and of course I win because I'm seeing the fruits of, of hard work or payoff. Right. Um, so what I what we were able to do at the back end of last year was take all of that knowledge, all of that experience, and then democratize it. So rather than it just being available to people at vice president and sort of chief, you know, C-level um, experience, okay, we decided that what we wanted to do was to was make it available, this level of knowledge, this level of expertise, to make available to everybody. So it really doesn't matter whether you're somebody that's just starting out, somebody who's in a maybe a, a semi-skilled or low-skilled job, all the way to somebody who's at the peak of their career. Okay, it doesn't it doesn't matter because the the techniques are all the same and the requirements are all the same. And I'll tell you one other thing as well, if I may, Tracy. It doesn't matter. Uh, no, no, it doesn't matter. The the um people think oh well it's all right for that guy over there he's earning the big bucks he's got a fancy car and a fancy office all right job satisfaction um is not dependent on the job the uh, on the job itself or the level of experience itself okay it's a little bit like um it's a little bit like a a, a suit or a dress okay mm -hmm. some dresses suit some people some suits to other people, okay? And somebody could be wearing the wrong dress. Now, that dress, dress may suit someone else perfectly. Someone else may be wearing the wrong suit. That suit may fit someone else perfectly. So just because, so this idea that that guy in the fancy office, he must be really happy, isn't necessarily true, okay? Yeah. Up and okay. down the experience level, up and down the earnings level, there are people who are, happy in their job and that's great and people who are unhappy and what i'm here today to say is that being unhappy in your job is not something you need to tolerate okay there are ways out of being unhappy in your job and that is something that i'm absolutely passionate about okay tracy has been so kind to allow me onto a show everybody to talk to you specifically about this point OK, yes. if you are not happy in your job, there are ways that you can do to change it. And that can start today. I love it. Thank you for saying it just so plain like that. Like, <laughs> I, I just love it. It's like because because we do get to a place where sometimes we've been there so long or we, you know, we just think, oh, this is the way it's going to be. So we don't even put any room in our brain to start thinking outside of I can do something totally different, you know, but, and that's one of the things, the questions I want to ask you, one of the big ones is how do we get to this place where we just think this is it. I'm just, you know, I'm going to work 80, this job for 80 years or until I retire, like there's nothing else out here. and, and get anxious about it, you know, kind of like Sunday night comes like this is Sunday night. And sometimes you know, people are already fretting about, man, I got to go to work tomorrow. I got to do this. So they already start to feel unhappy, which makes the weekend even shorter. I mean, it's already short. It's just two days, right? But that makes it kind of like a day and a half or maybe three quarters, you know, when you're already worrying about it. Absolutely. Uh, th this is this is live right now, isn't it? We're, we're, we're going out live, aren't we? Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, yeah. People can and people can send in comments and questions, can't they? Yeah. Okay, fine. So... Let's invite people. If anyone's got any any questions or any comments, I'd be keen, and I'm sure you are as well. If anybody is not happy, if how I'm I am so curious to know how many people watching or listening right now are excited for tomorrow morning 
or are anxious or not looking forward to tomorrow morning. Mm -hmm. Okay, guys, if you're, you know, anyone that's listening, anyone that's watching, let Tracy know. Okay, put a comment in on whatever platform you're watching on. Okay, are you happy? Are you excited for tomorrow morning? Or are you not looking forward to tomorrow morning? Okay, and I tell you something, the the amount of people who are not looking forward to tomorrow morning, statistically, is probably in the region of about 70%. I believe you. Yep. Okay. Statistically, yep. more than two thirds of Americans are not happy in their jobs. Yeah. Okay. Which is a ridiculously high number. Okay. It varies state by state, it varies region by region, but across the country, it's about 70%. Which means for every 10 people listening to this show, seven of them are not looking forward to tomorrow morning. Right. Yeah. Okay. And you asked the question, what, how did we get this way? Well, I think it's probably it's probably because people peep um because the economy is the way it is, that there is unemployment, people just feel almost grateful for the fact they have a job. And don't want to necessarily jeopardize it. Okay. Right. It's like I've got a job, I've got to cling on to it. Okay. Not necessarily realizing that actually having a job may well be the best time to find another job. Okay. 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 And I'll tell you why. Okay. Because the risk are the risks are so low. Okay. If you are not happy in your job right now, okay. There are, you are risking nothing at all in looking for another one. Worst case scenario, you don't find another one for a couple of months. So you still keep doing what you're doing now. Best case scenario, you do, and you go change it. Yeah. And isn't okay. it easier to find another job when you have a job? Absolutely. It absolutely is. Okay. Yeah. For two reasons. Number one, because you have a professional mindset. Okay. And also you are constantly kind of reminded of the reasons why you need to leave, okay? However, if you leave a job, okay, suddenly the urgency goes up, you may be tempted to take the first thing that comes along, so you could actually be trading a bad job for one that's even worse, right? Okay? because right. suddenly it's like, oh, dear, I, 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 I need to pay my rent. I've got to pay my mortgage. I've got to, you know, put clothes on my kids' backs. I've got to put food on the table, so I'm just going to take anything, okay? So... Yeah. It could be that when you are the that, that uh, when you're between jobs, the pressure is higher. Therefore, you just take the first thing that comes along. Right. However, when you are uh, when you are currently working, you've always got the safety net of if an, if a job that's not quite right comes along, you can always say no. It's not going to worsen your current situation. You're only going to move for something that's better. Okay, and I'll tell you one other thing as well. For whatever reason, and it's 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 something I've never fully understood, there is a prejudice in the workplace for people that are out of work. There's almost this kind of mindset of, well, if you're not working, there must be something wrong with you. Therefore, maybe I shouldn't hire you. Okay? Groucho Marx, you know, one of the Marx brothers, famously yeah. said, the only clubs I want to join are the ones that won't have me. All right. As in, if the club is so bad that they have me, I automatically don't want to join them. There's what is he was saying it as a joke, but it's almost the same kind of mentality when it comes to hiring. Okay. The fact that you are hired by someone else makes you just by that factor can make you more appealing to an employer than if you're not. Yeah. So, so this leads us to this ridiculous situation that people often won't look for another job however unhappy they are until they've either been fired or the company's collapsed or they've been let go or whatever, right? Yeah. Like, or, or, right. Why? Okay. Or they get so frustrated that they just like, forget this. I'm not taking it anymore. I'm going to quit. Yeah. yeah. And then all of a sudden they realize I didn't even, I didn't need this in the, in the first place, you know? Right. Yeah. Yeah. Best, yeah. You know, a far better thing is rather than waiting for it to get that bad, Rather than it waiting to get so terrible, make a change now. Yeah. Make a change when you're dissatisfied before you're unhappy. Unhappy before you're desperate. Desperate before you're unemployed. Mm -hmm. Okay? Mm -hmm. Now, so let me, 
So tell me, tell me this, how, because this is why I want people to know, if, especially if you've been on a job for so long, how do you know, like, what to do next? Because that's the thing. We get stuck, like, we get stuck in this place of, well, I've been doing this for so long. It's, it's just come easy to, like, go to sleep, go to work, come home, watch TV, eat, you know, get up, do the same thing over and over even though might be stressed out, complaining about it, but not really confident in, okay, I can actually, somebody want to hire me, you know? So how do we find that thing that we love to do? Okay, that's a fabulous question. Okay, so um, one of the primary things that somebody needs to do is to, in, in this search, the first thing to do is to determine what their objectives are, okay? Where do you want to go? What do you want to do? Okay. And probably the best analogy I can give to this is imagine somebody came along and said, you know what, Tracy, you know what? I I love you so much. I've loved being on your show so much. Here's what I'm going to do for you. I'm going to pay for an all expenses paid trip for you to go anywhere in the world for a month to do whatever you want on vacation. Okay. Take me to Australia. <laughs> I'm going to pay for an all expenses trip. Okay. All you need to do is to tell me where you want to go, what you want to do, how you want to do it. And I'll, and I'll pay everything. All right. Now, what are you going to go? Well, I don't want, I don't, I don't know what I want to do. So I'm just going to stay here. No, you're going to think, right. Okay, fine. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to probably sit down with a blank piece of paper and write down all the things I want to do on vacation. Okay, mm -hmm. I want somewhere with a golden sandy beach. You know, do I want somewhere where it's really warm? Do I maybe want to do something in the winter and go climbing glaciers? Do I want to have a city break? Okay, what can what kind of things do I want to do? Okay, now you may go well. I don't really know. Okay, so you base that on experiences. Okay, in the past when I've been on vacation, what are the things I've really enjoyed? Oh. There was that vacation I took a few years ago where we walked hand in hand on the beach with the water lapping against our ankles. That was really nice. And then we we stayed overnight in a tiki hut, and that was amazing. And then we jumped on a plane, and we went to that city, and we saw some really great museums, and that was really cool as well. And the nightlife, oh, my God, the nightlife was amazing. But I remember one of the times we stayed in a hotel that was too close to where there was, like, these nightclubs. And I found it really hard to sleep because like the, like the neon was really bright and the, there was too much noise outside. And and uh, and I remember we stayed in one hotel and there were lots of young kids and they were making so much of a noise. So, so you're already starting to build up your likes and your dislikes. I really want to have something that has this, but I really don't want to have something that has this. Right. Okay. So you start to build up all of these things. All right. Now, let's just say I said to you, all expenses paid, but with a maximum budget of $20,000. So you start to think, okay, fine. In order to have this vacation, um, I need to go here, 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 but it can cost me a maximum of $20,000. Uh, $20, fine. Okay. Now, you may only have a list of likes and dislikes. You may still not, and a budget, you may still not yet have a, um, a specific destination in mind. So then what do you do? Well, you go online. You go on to maybe some specific vacation uh, websites. You go on TripAdvisor. You go on to, uh, I don't know, um, Lonely Planet or some other, other vacation websites. You may just Google beach holiday with sunshine, right? Right, yeah. You start to pick up an idea. And even then you may not have an idea. So you may call up a travel agency and say, hey, I want to go on a vacation that has this and this and this features doesn't have this and this and this features and with a budget of this amount of money. Okay. Now this is something that we all do every year, every couple of years, however often we, however often we take vacations in whatever guise. Okay. I, I, I doubt few of us have been lucky enough for someone to come along and say it's all expenses paid. But at the same time, regardless of what your budget is, when people say I'm going to go on vacation, literally they're, 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 they're their options are limited only by their imagination. Okay. Yeah. A few weeks ago, uh, this is God's honest truth, right? A few weeks ago, we decided that because of because of lockdown, we've been locked down for too long. We just decided we we're going to go on vacation. 
but where are we going to go? What are we going to do? We can't go anywhere. Okay. My wife's got an autoimmune, so we can't go into hotels or go on planes or anything like that. We've got to be super careful because of COVID. So we rented an RV and it was like, fine, we've got an RV. Where are we going to go? Our only limit yeah. is where is driving distance within a couple of weeks. So where are we going to go? And we worked it out. These are all the things we want to do. These are all the things we don't want to do. And we figured it out. All right. Making going on vacation is one kind of journey. Changing jobs is another journey. And the paradigm is exactly the same. The approach is exactly the same. You start off with your list of likes, your list of dislikes, the amount of money you need to earn. And then armed with that information, you then start researching. Right. Google, go on job sites, look at things like monster.com, look at, go on LinkedIn, speak to friends, speak to family. Okay. That's, that's, it's, it's, I know I'm making it sound very simplistic. Yeah. It, it's just that people don't think of it in that term. People don't right. think of it in this framework. Yeah. It, you're so right. Cause I think that uh, once we get, what I call stuck on the job, not that we're actually stuck, but when, when we start feeling that way or, or move or acting that way, you know, like I've been here forever. So I'm, you know, I just had it in my mind already. I'm going to retire here. I'm going to be here X amount of years and then I'm, I'm gone. Then we, we forget that it's important to create that nostalgia and think about what are the fun things we got to do. So planning is a, is a very important part of it, you know, so, but we have to plan out, out parts of our life, right? We got to plan out, spiritually what are we going to do you know economically what are we going to do we got to plan out what kind of fun things are we going to do and nostalgia is something that just keeps us alive so it's like we're adding years to our life but life to our years at the same time absolutely right? and the thing is when you got and, and the thing about any any transformative journey any transformative journey you take the most important square foot of real estate on that journey is right here Exactly. If you haven't yeah. got your mindset right, if you haven't yeah. got the drive to do it, or you believe you can't do it, then you're never going to do it. Okay. Yeah. The single biggest reason people do not achieve their potential, live unhappy lives, do not achieve inner peace, inner happiness, or any, anything, uh, any form of life fulfillment, the biggest single reason is because of is a lack of belief in their ability. Yeah. Another way people get in their own way. That's right. Okay. If yeah. somebody can get out of their own way, if they can dispense with these limiting beliefs, if they can move past this idea of I can't do it, no one's gonna hire me, I have nothing to offer. If they can rid themselves of that, then they the opportunities are there for them to get. Okay? Right. Yeah. It's like the whole thing. One, you know, it's, it's like that old, that old saying, well, um, what happens if I try it and I fail? What happens if you try and you succeed? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. I remember uh, I did a challenge a couple of years ago and the challenge was, what if you never heard of the concept of failure or that you that you can't do something? What if the only concept in your mind was that anything I decide I want, I can do it. Like it's mine. I just got to you know, put some action to it. I just got to do this or find somebody that can help me do that. And usually that's really what it, it really is. It's all about, you know, our thought, right? Remember that old saying, you know, think about, I mean, uh, watch your thoughts. They become your, watch your thoughts. They become your words and watch your words. They become your habits. Then watch your habits because that becomes your character. And so we know what our, our true character is like, even if somebody else doesn't, we know if we really, we you know, want something to manifest or we just want to be a dreamer all our lives. And so it's really important to plan these things out, be specific about it, be smart about it, you know, be strategic about it and and make sure something that, you know, attainable, you know, like you were saying, you know, plan, what kind of how much money do you need? You know, if you do want to go on vacation, you know, if you do want to go see the beach, you know, that kind of stuff. So, yeah, I love that. And then put a date on it. You know, when do you want to go? Absolutely, it's so true. You know what? It's interesting when you talk when you talk about failure. Failure is a concept that that we only um, that we are only introduced to when we are about two and a half years old. Okay, before a child hits two and a half, 
They have no concept of failure. It just, as a concept, it doesn't exist, okay? Failure or the inability to do something does not exist before a child hits about two, two and a half, okay? And you know how we know this? Because all children acquire the skills they need to survive in life before they're two and a half, okay? How many adults do you know that crawl instead of walk? Exactly. Or yeah. can't speak. And I'm not yeah. talking about people that have got that that, that have uh, that have disabilities. I'm talking about you know people that just gave up learning those skills. Right. Yeah. No child went. Do you know what? Walking's not for me. You know, and crawl down the aisle. You know, it just doesn't happen. That's it's, true. Failure is a concept that we learn by from society. Society teaches us unfairly that we will or can or sometimes even should fail yeah and i think it's i think that even if we what we consider failure or we mess up or whatever that is, the, the the real failure comes in when you don't learn from it and you do something different yeah. so the real failure comes in when we make that same mistake over and over thinking okay i'm just gonna i'm gonna try it one more time the exact same way but it's not gonna work it didn't work the last 30 times you gotta change something about it so why not change jobs? Why not adventure out there? Why not see if there's something totally different for you to see where you actually fit? Because right. yeah. let's, let's go back to our analogy of a child learning to walk, okay? Yeah. Okay. I wonder how many people that are watching this right now are thinking to themselves, well, I tried to I, I applied for a job and I didn't get it. Or I sent my, my resume to a few places and none of them got back to me. Or I went for an interview and the guy was a was was a was a you know was an idiot and I, and I, and then didn't get hired right now. If any of the people that are watching this either themselves or if they've got kids remember their kids starting to walk right. Kid gets up, walks a couple of steps. What happens? They fall on their ass. Now, if that kid at that point had gone, do you know what? Walking's not for me. I tried it once and it didn't work. Okay. I'm <laughs> I'm staying down here. I'm cool. I'm on all four. This is what I'm in. I'm good. You know. And then yeah. if if that was our if that if that was our mindset, you'd be walking in the bank tripping over people because they're all on all fours. All right. You'd be trying to go and do your grocery shopping and trying to maneuver your, your shopping cart around people on all fours. Okay. Yeah. But no, but that's not what happens. Why? Because at that stage of our lives, we don't we we haven't yet acquired this idea of I'll just give up. Yeah. Okay. Because we know, I'm looking around, hey, my older brother's walking, my older sister's walking, my mum's walking, my dad's walking, you know, my cousins are walking. I need to walk. So I'm yeah. just going to do it. Yeah. And yet, for some reason, so there's no a, 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 a baby of like 18 months, two years old, whatever it is, doesn't go, it's not fair. They're lucky. They're fortunate. Life's been kinder to them. They can all walk. Me, I can't walk. I'm just going to have to stay in this crawl you know crawl them and I have to keep crawling all the time they don't do that they go you know what I'm gonna get up and I'm gonna walk and it didn't happen today it might not happen tomorrow but I'm gonna keep at it I'm gonna keep at it and sure enough after a few weeks I'll be walking and I'll be happy because I can walk around I can get that stuff I can climb over there I can do all this cool fun right. stuff everyone else is doing yeah yeah but changing jobs is the same thing we can either stay in this quagmire of unhappiness. Exactly. And, uh, and from the happiness, it bleeding into jealousy and resentment of the other people that are happy in their jobs, other people that you perceive to have they've got it all worked out. And I've got to tell you a big secret, no one's got it all worked out, all right? But the truth is, rather than us, us being in this kind of quagmire, take a lesson from a baby, okay? Mm -hmm. That realizes that okay, it didn't happen today. I'll get up and I'll try again and again and again and again until you'll finally get it. Right, right. All right. You know, um, I notice um in, in your background you got some beautiful light fittings, okay? And the inventor of the light bulb is a man called Thomas Edison. Mm -hmm. Okay, okay. Thomas says, oh, Thomas Edison very famously, when he finally invented the, the light bulb, the incandescent light bulb, um, he was at a press, he was at a press conference and a reporter came to him and said, um, how how many times did you uh, how many attempts did you make to get this right? 
He says, actually, this was the, I forget the number, but it was, let's just say it was, this was the 243rd attempt I made to get it right. I tried, this was the 243rd time to get it right. And the reporter said to him, how did you feel about failing 242 times? He said, I didn't fail 242 times. Those were 242 successful attempts to not make an incandescent light bulb. Yeah. Yeah. Now, mm-hmm. think of it this way. He was putting a positive spin on it, but think of it this way. He had to try again and again and again. 242 times he failed before he got it right. Right. Okay. Michael Jordan, uh, if you look at his statistics, the amount of uh, of, of decisive, uh, decisive shots, game-winning shots that he missed, passes that he missed. If you look at all his statistics... The amount of times he failed is staggeringly high. But it was all of those failures that made him the, the success, arguably the greatest of all time. Okay? Right. Joe DiMaggio famously said, I missed every pitch I didn't swing for. If I swing if I swing and I miss, some of them, if I swing, some I'll hit, some I'll miss. Mm-hmm. But if I, don't, if I just watch the pitch go by, I miss those every single time. Yeah. So tomorrow morning, or, or or immediately after this broadcast is over, somebody could decide. Okay, today's the day I'm going to make a difference. Right. Okay? They may succeed, they may fail, but if they choose not to, they will absolutely fail every time. You yeah. will fail every time you don't try. Mm-hmm. So I love it. the yeah. opportunity is there. Okay, and it's yeah. uh, and the the the. The, the systems, the processes that are involved are so simple. Anybody can do it. So tell us a little bit about, like, what are some simple things that they can do? Like when you, because you know how sometimes you get ready to go for an interview with something totally different. So what are some things that you can do to help build the confidence of saying, this is what you can expect. These are some things that you can do to, you know, make that the chances of you getting that job a lot better. Well, the first thing is is to is um, is to ident- is to um, have a system to work through, okay. And what I mean by that is, it's literally just a series of steps, okay. One, we talked a few moments ago about how do you identify the kind of job you want to do, and we talked again about list all the things you want from the jobs you've had before, all the things you don't want, and then and then the amount of money you need to earn. And then from that, you've at least got a blueprint. You got a you got mm-hmm. a playbook. You got a target, okay. Then you have got to ma- write. And create a resume. Now, for a lot of people, that's really daunting. But we'll talk in a few moments about um, something that I can really do to help people on that. Okay. Once you've written a resume, then you need to get that resume in front of the right people. How do you determine who the right those right people are? Again, that's something that we can help with as well. All right. So you have a number of steps, and it's important to remember all each step needs to do is to get you to the next step. Okay. You don't write a resume to get a job. People think, I've got to write a resume to get a job. You don't. All a resume needs to do is to get you an interview. Because nobody, I've got to tell you, since the beginning of time itself, nobody ever hired a piece of paper. They hire people, okay? Yeah. So yeah. all a resume is, is a, marketing, is, a, is a marketing leaflet that says, hey, Mr. Company who I might want to work for, would you please interview me? That's all it is. So mm-hmm. you want to highlight your skills and experience as appropriate to the job you're you are you're um, hoping to interview for, such that you'll hope that the person will give you an interview. Okay, then you make sure your interview preparation is good. And again, there's there's there, there's something I can do to help with that. And your actual. So, uh, so let me ask you something right here about that because I sure. one of the things people get scared of is like the questions. Two of the biggest questions are: What are your strengths and what are your weaknesses? Right. You know? So that's something like make sure that you got to practice that before you get to the place. <laughs> well, let me, okay, let me tell you something. Okay, um, this may surprise you. Okay, um, I wrote a book over the summer, uh, which is available on the Sleazy Academy website. Um, which is um, I wrote. I, I did some research beforehand. I spoke to some colleagues. I spoke to a few like CEOs, and I compiled a list of ninety nine interview questions. Wow. and how to answer them okay so what we do with each question is this is the question or 
the format of the question that you're going to be asked, okay? Um, this is the kind, this is what they want to know. So when they ask this question, this is the kind of thing they want to know, and here's the structure of how to answer it, okay? Um, I think the first 90 are kind of the more kind of traditional questions, and the nine at the end are the kind of more goofy ones that have become a bit more kind of on vogue recently, okay? Um, and so the, um, and, and one of the things that, that, that I say in the, in the forward to this book is the importance of rehearsing the most common questions. Okay? Mm -hmm. You, I can guarantee you, I'll bet all the change in my pockets against all the change in yours right now, that every interview anybody goes on, they're going to be asked, why, why are you interested in this company? Why are you interested in this company? Yes. Okay. They all, you always get asked that, okay? And I'm sorry, if you haven't got an answer to that question, why the hell are you in an interview, okay? And the other, another question you're almost certainly going to be asked is, name me your three biggest strengths. And another one, name me your, you know, what's your single biggest weakness, mm -hmm. okay? Now, let me tell you, I'm going to give you, okay, people watching and listening at home, if you listen, if you've not listened to anything else, Listen to me and Tracy for the next five minutes. This is going to be gold, okay? Right. Pens and paper at the ready. Okay. So this is this is the best of Simon, okay? So I can't believe I'm giving this stuff away for free, but I am. It's, and, and the reason why I'm giving you away free, people, is because I love Tracy so much, okay? I had that effect on folks. <laughs> what an amazing person Tracy is. Okay. So listen to this. Okay. Why do you want to work for this company? If you ever get asked that question, okay? If you, the way you answer that question has to be um, figured out before you even go in there. Okay. What they're asking you is, how much research did you do into us before you? Exactly. Came? Yeah. All right. That's what they're really asking you. Okay. And I'll tell you for why. Okay. I'm going to give you a really, really, really silly analogy, but it's one that, but it means something. Cast your mind back to when you were 16, 16 years old. Okay. And you were at school dance. Okay. Now, when a guy came over to you, Tracy, and said, Would you like to dance? Okay. And you, and let's just say a guy came over to you and said, Hey, Tracy, would you like to dance? And you say, Why are you asking me to dance? Now, imagine he can either say, Tracy, because you're the most beautiful girl in the room, of course I want to dance with you. Or he can say, Well, I asked everybody else. <laughs> and you're the yeah, right. right. Who would you far rather dance with? The first guy, okay? The same way that people love to be loved and want to be wanted and need to be needed, okay? Mm -hmm. Companies do as well, okay? Companies want to hire people that want to work for them. Yeah. And the way during the interview process that they, that they quantify this, that they get a feel for this, is by how much research somebody's done beforehand, mm -hmm. right? I've got to tell you, when I ask that question for people interviewing for my companies, if they if they clearly haven't even looked at our website, gone on any news wires, seen any of our YouTube videos, okay, there's so much stuff about us out in the big wide world. The doing research on us and on me is so simple. If someone's not even given half an hour of their time to research into us, why am I even considering to give them all of the time and input and energy and training and support that I'm going to be giving them if they come and work for us, okay? So yeah. when they say, why do you want to work for us? What they're asking you is, tell me what research you've done about us, okay? Now, you've gone, you've done your research, you're still thinking, why do I want to work for these guys? What they're asking for are long-term permanent reasons, okay? They're not asking for transient reasons, okay? They're asking for reasons that are going to be just as exciting just as motivating just as thrilling in nine months time when you've been working for the company for quite a few months it's four o'clock in the morning it's dark outside it's pouring down with rain you've got to get up to go and do an early shift or you've got to get up to uh to to, to drive to the airport to go and fly to some godforsaken place to do a project or whatever okay okay so it's got to be something that's going to be just as exciting then as now. Yeah. Right? yeah. That's what they want to know. Okay. Mm -hmm. 
So why do you want to work for us? It's long. So it could be about the culture of the company, the products they sell. Um, it could be about their plans for growth, whatever. OK, by the way, it should never be about because I want to leave these bunch of jokers that I'm working for now that couldn't find their backsides with both hands. All right. So it has to be yeah. about something that, uh, again, tr why, Tracy, why did that guy want to dance with you? Because he wanted to dance with you, not because everybody else said no or everyone else was horrible. OK, right. right. that's why that's why that's what they want to hear. So that's how to answer the why do you want to work for us question. OK, what are your strengths? OK, so in your preparation, you've read the job specification, you've looked at the role that you're going to be doing and you're thinking, right, OK, the things that I can do that are going to really help me in this role are this, this and this. Maybe in that part of the role, they want someone that's got high attention to detail. Actually, I actually have high attention to detail. So I'll talk about my high attention to detail. Maybe they're looking at they want someone who is reliable. I'm reliable. I'll talk about how reliable I am. OK. Oh, and by the way, don't just go, oh, I'm reliable. What you want to do in yeah. answering questions is you want to talk is you want to use what we refer to as the star method. OK, I've got a post on LinkedIn about it. I've got plenty of on Facebook and, and on our website about it. So I'm not going to bore you with all the details. But su suffice to say, when when you answer an interview question about strengths and uh, when you're talking about um, things that you can bring to the table. Okay. Talk about situations you were, you were in beforehand. Okay. Mm -hmm. well, okay. So tell me about your strength. Well, one of my biggest strengths is my attention to detail. Really? Tell me about that. Well, I've got to tell you, um, there was one time a few months ago where we had this particular situation. Then what I did, I was tasked with doing this. Okay. Um, my attention to detail achieved this. And this is what the results were. S-T-A-R, star. Situation task, um, uh, um, achievement and result. Okay. S-T-A-R. Okay. Yeah. So I was in this. Oh. Pardon? I like that acronym. Right. You know, it's, so it's like, go be a star. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Like a star. All right. Um, so I was in this situation. I was tasked with doing this thing. This is what we achieved because of what I did. And then this was the result afterwards. Okay. So you're giving, um, evidence-based reasons you're not just saying yeah i've got attention to detail but but when when you talk about you know before what you did and then the result that's how to answer that question okay yeah and then finally tell me your weakness i have to tell you um there are two reasons why people ask this question some people ask for one or the other some for both okay <laughs> some people ask uh, that you know tell me what your what your primary weakness is genuinely because they want to know what your weaknesses are just in case you might need some extra support or training or assistance in in fulfilling a job okay it could be tracy you're amazing in in, in every way you're fantastic i just want to make sure in order for you to shine are there any areas where you might need some extra support okay that could genuinely be a reason they want to know if there's anything in, that they need to do to help you shine okay most people, either instead of that or in addition to that, ask it for quite a different reason. They want to know whether or not you can own a problem, admit to it, and have the humility to accept it. Mm -hmm. okay? It's a test of your of your responsibility and your humility. Right. Yeah. And your and from because without responsibility and humility, it makes it very hard to train people it makes it very hard to coach people because if somebody believes i've got no weaknesses how on earth are you meant to identify say point out to somebody actually you made a mistake over there and let me help you and coach you so you don't overcome so you don't have that mistake again okay yeah, right. so by the way when you when somebody does say what weaknesses have you got be honest yeah okay absolutely be honest okay so, for example, if somebody said to me, what are your, you know, what, what weaknesses do you have? I'd be honest and say there are times when when I, I spread myself too thin. OK, I take mm -hmm. on too many projects because I, I, I get very, very kind of excited. And as a result of that, things can sometimes drop. So I might need some support in 
in uh, uh, in um, making sure that things don't fall by the wayside. Okay. Now, I think it's very important that I make one point, though, Tracy, which is never, ever, ever, ever. Is that enough others? <laughs> one more. Ever. Do this, <laughs> do this ridiculous, nonsensical, ridiculous um, uh, where you kind of like turn a strength into a weakness. Okay. Oh, I, oh, Tracy, let me tell you my weakness. I'm too generous. I'm too nice to be. People take advantage of me because I'm too nice. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. <laughs> All right. It's like, okay, nobody has no weaknesses. Nobody, I've got to tell you, nobody that nobody is, is so perfect that their only weakness is too much perfection. Okay. It's not true. Okay. And, and at the end of the day, interviewers, companies are wise to that. Okay. They're not going to fall for this utter nonsense that people have of trying to take a strength and turn it into a weakness okay right, yeah. let me give you if i may one tiny anecdote about 18 months ago i had uh i had a it was a, a client i was working with i would worked on a couple of kind of big opportunities for them i've like staffed out a lot of their kind of like c-suite and they said well we're looking for like an entry level sales position can you give us a hand so i was like okay you know as a favor it's not something i normally work with but as, as a favor i will so I made a few calls and asked if anybody knew of anyone that was looking to get into a company, whatever. And I came and I, and I, I, pr I presented with a couple of candidates. And uh, the first one goes in and he has his interview and he does great. And they think, this guy's really good. And so they asked him to come back for a second interview. And he has a panel interview with three or four people. And uh, during the course of the interview, they're going through all the regular interview questions. And then one of them, and then one of them says, uh, so um tell us what your what your biggest weakness is he says what they said tell us what, what your biggest weakness is he says i've got no weaknesses uh, uh oh so this <laughs> this girl says to her she says uh no no come on everyone's got weaknesses i don't no, no, come on. Everyone's got weaknesses. Tell us what your biggest weakness is. And he turned, uh, sorry, a, a guy interjected. He said, come on, everyone's got weaknesses. Well, well, what's your biggest weakness? He turns to this guy and he goes, dude, I'm in an interview. Are you trying to throw me under the bus or something? <sighs> Needless to say, he was not offered the job. Yeah. All right. That's sad. Made it to the second interview and everything. Exactly, you know, yeah. and, and 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 uh, had he had he um performed well in that interview, they would have offered him the job. He uh, going out coming out of the first interview, he was the stronger candidate. Oh, yeah, All right. So, but and they offered the other, they offered the other guy, okay, which leads me on to one other point. Um, if 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 uh, if I may, yeah, go for it, which is uh, it's a fallacy to think that the most qualified person will always get the job. It's mm -hmm. not true. Okay. I have had so many, um, I can tell you hundreds of stories over the course of my career where the, where there was a better candidate in terms of skills, experience, accomplishments, whatever. And then someone else and the someone else who may have been kind of coming in at this point overtook them because either they perform better at interview or and probably because they wanted it more yeah never underestimate the power of desire yeah okay if you want it more mm -hmm. i promise you that will express itself in how you interview and yes. will pick up on that yes I, i've seen so many times but that has made up a skills gap and overtaken. Yeah. It tells us two things. Number one, if you are, I mean, you're not necessarily going to know, but if you are the weaker candidate, if you want it more, you may well overtake the stronger candidate and get off of the job. Okay. 
And number two, if you're the stronger candidate, don't be beaten because someone else showed they wanted it more than you do. Mm -hmm. Okay, mm -hmm. You can't control anything in the interview process in terms of your competitive advantage or otherwise against other candidates in the field, other people going for the job. OK, you've got no control over that. The only thing you can control is how well you perform. Exactly. Yeah. So perform best. Perform as if this is the only thing from now that matters. Yeah. OK. I love that because it brings out a couple of things. Like because when you when you're excited about it, you want something really bad. You're um, just it just brings out the power of intention. You know, like when you when you you go in there with that confidence of. This job is mine. Like, I don't care what nobody else has or, you know, what degree they got, or they, what experience they got. Like, this is mine because you, and that's the good thing about finding something that you really love, something that you're passionate about. It's like, because then you'll go in there and you'll, you'll, they'll get to talking and you'll just be chatting like, you know, you've been knowing them forever and you'll have that, that camaraderie already. And, and they'll just feel more comfortable with you. Plus, people, I think a lot of jobs love somebody that is coachable not that just knows it all and they know how to do it you know and you can't be very knowledgeable about the job but are you knowledgeable about their systems and the way they do things that's the part that you know you know companies want to know are you coachable you know yeah. are you humble like you were saying two things more than anything else they want a coachability uh, okay obviously skills and experience are going to play a part at the end of the day um i may want to and I may have all the coachability, but at the end of the day, nobody is going to hire me to be a brain surgeon. Okay. However much I want it, I may really want to be a brain surgeon. I may well say, listen, I'm really coachable. You can really teach me, but no one's going to hire me to be a brain surgeon. Okay. So there are sometimes skills, experience, and qualifications do play a part. Okay. But assuming that somebody has base level skills, experience, and qualifications, or mm -hmm. they're going for a job that doesn't necessarily require any previous skills, experience, or specific qualifications, okay? Mm -hmm. The two things that the companies look for more than anything else are coachability and desire. Mm, I like that. All right. If I'm going to put that in If you can, if you can, if you can, um, if you can show hunger and desire, you'll be amazed how far that'll go. Yeah, that's awesome. Oh my gosh, I got I to gotta write that one down, y'all. <laughs> Two things necessary, hunger and coachability. That's right. Yeah, I love it. I mean, that that's just awesome right there. That says a lot in itself. So uh, I know I've taken up more time than I, ex I asked you, but thank you so much. This has been fun. I didn't even get to ask you the questions that I needed to, but yeah. I did. But I want to ask you this. So I know you have some things coming up next year, and I want people to be able to have the opportunity to take advantage of those things, especially uh, when it comes to dealing with the challenge, because I think that's something that that we are going to need. And if, if it's not you in particular that needs a job or that needs something new in your life, that needs direction on, you know, which way do I go for this, that, or the other, whether it's should I do a business, what type of business should I do, you know, um, if you feel unhappy in any area of your life, I believe Simon, you know, is a person that can really help you figure out, you know, exactly like, OK, so what should you do? And then, like, I will be the person, too, that you can talk to about what are some strategic steps that you can take next to uh, help you reach that along the way. So talk to us a little bit about what you have coming up. And then you guys look, keep stay in touch with us and tell them how they can stay in touch with you so that we can just follow you. Follow Simon, you guys. And so just remember this. Hashtag Simon Says. Y'all remember playing that game, right? Simon Says. It's a fun game. It's an easy game. And like, if you just, it's kind of like uh, the analogy he brought up in the very, in the beginning. You know, like when a child is little, they start off crawling. And then they start off, you know, trying to stand up. And they fall. And they you know, take a step here, take a step there. And then they fall. And then they start holding on to stuff. And then they just start scooting along and next thing you know they're all over the place and into everything but we can do that same thing and, and even though you might be uh fantastic at the job you have now but you might feel unhappy and it may not be a job maybe it's a different area of your life well and, and i'll just say it maybe sometimes it's your marriage 
because you know it's COVID. And a lot of people are, you know, they say the marriage toll is up higher than ever. Well, you know, probably a lot of that has to do with finances, which is not a new thing because most marriages don't last because of either finances or sex. And that's just how it is. That's how it's always been and probably won't change, right? Um, so I want Simon to tell us a little bit about what you have coming up and how that can help folks. Okay, so right now um, we have the Ultimate Job Hunting Toolkit, which is available at ultimatejobhuntingtoolkit.com. It's down there on the uh, little uh, ticker over there. Um, so if you go to ultimatejobhuntingtoolkit.com, um, you will get a full suite of resources that will help you uh, get your perfect job. Um, it is packed full of all the templates and uh, and uh, resources that you'll need uh, to really get you um, to get you on the way uh, to find your perfect job. Okay, it's everything from uh, figuring out the kind of job that you need, writing the resume, getting uh, figuring out whether or not a job agency can really help you or just waste your time, uh, helping you track uh, your your job hunt. Uh, preparing for interviews, attending interviews, really everything you'll possibly need, even up until um, uh, getting references when people ask you for references as they are preparing your job offer. So it's all there in the Ultimate Job Hunting Toolkit. Um, the toolkit itself is a mere snip at $36, okay? Um, we were actually advised by uh, our advisors that we should be selling it for $97. We decided, no, we're going to be selling it for thirty-six dollars, because we wanted to really democratize yeah. it and make it available to everybody. Okay. Yeah. Now, if some people want some extra help, there is an opportunity uh, to get a full coaching program that comes with it. You don't need to, but it is there um, offered as well. Simply just click and download the Ultimate Job Hunting Toolkit.com. It's all there, and at thirty-six dollars, um, I mean, let's be honest, um, you can get uh, you know uh, two cinema tickets these days is thirty-six dollars. So uh, we ain't going to the movies. So, you know, go get yourself another job is dead. There you go. So exactly. <laughs> aside from that, what's super, super exciting is that on starting from uh, January 4th next year, which is only in about three weeks, um, we are starting our Get Your Perfect Job Challenge. OK, this is a 10 day challenge starting on January the 4th. OK. Um, we've taken it of, as a 10 day challenge because we want to make it something that's super easy for people to do whilst they're currently working. You'll only need to invest about half an hour a day in this challenge. And, uh, the, I, the objective will be that by the end of the 10 days, you will have a clear idea of exactly what you want to do. You'll have a, a resume ready to go and companies and a, and a, 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 a um, series of messages ready to send to your ideal companies so you can actually get started getting a new job, okay? This is the get a new job for 2021, okay? It's a new year. It's time to get a new job, okay? How, how much does that cost right there to be in the challenge? Let me ask you, how much would you pay to be in that challenge? Four letters. <laughs> I'll tell you how much. It, I'll tell you how, Seriously, I'll tell you how much we're charging for this zero dollars and zero wow that's incredible it's free and i'll tell you why it's free because i believe that when you cut after the year we've had let's be honest we're all looking forward to kicking 2020 down the uh you know in the butt and saying goodbye right because 2020 was a tough year okay so let's start 2021 with a with with a such a strong message of we are going to build our future. We're going to build it together. And we're going to make 2021 the best year we can possibly make it. Okay. And um, what, what better a way could we think of than if we're not happy in our jobs, getting a new job that's going to make us happy in our work, happy in our week, happy in our weekend, happy in our marriage, and happy in our life. Exactly. Okay? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it's very simple. As far as I'm concerned, the, um, the, the 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 year begins the first monday of the year is january the 4th and the life you want the marriage you want and the home you want is fueled by the career you build mm -hmm. and let's build it together okay again we were told we should be charging 100 bucks for people to do this challenge we're charging zero 
Um, and that is, that's excellent. I want to thank you for that because a lot of times that's all we need is somebody who is going to uh, motivate us, challenge us, inspire us, or keep us accountable or make us even feel like we're accountable. Even though, you know, it's not like you have to, you know, turn in your homework and, you know, somebody's going to get you if you don't do this. But just knowing that other people are doing it with you, that sometimes is all the motivation that you need or all the encouragement that you need. Like, I'm not alone with this. Absolutely. You know? and the beauty of this challenge is it's going to be in small, achievable chunks every day. OK, it's going to be over 10 days. So it's going to be, you know, Monday through Friday, you'll get the weekends off to catch up and then Monday through Friday. And by the end of that second week, you will have everything you need. And hopefully some people may even have some opportunities in the pipeline. And that's available at getyourperfectjobchallenge.com. That's All right. getyourperfectjobchallenge.com. Get your perfect job challenge. getyourperfectjobchallenge.com. I love that. Wow. What a way to end it. I just want to leave this on the screen because you know what? It's like, so that means on January 3rd, you guys, is the last date that you can sign up for this. That's right. And uh, I, you, yeah, have a, you have a little thing in the link where all you got to do is just click on it and go to it and sign up for it. It doesn't cost you anything, but it's going to motivate you, inspire you to have what? Only positive expectations so that when Sunday night comes, you don't have to worry about what instead of worrying about, you know, what I'm going to do tomorrow, what I'm going to say to this person and say all those ruminating negative thoughts of, that are ruminating around. You can just kill them things like they ants, A-N-T-S. That's what I call them, right? Automatic negative thoughts. They just started coming. You ain't even invite them. They just started coming. You know, things that may not have even happened. They're just coming. You're already dreading going to work like, dang, I got to get what I'm going to wear tomorrow. You know, stuff like that. Be thinking about what is it that I like? to do what is it if i could do anything i wanted to do what is that one thing or two things what is it that i don't like let me make a list right now before i even get the challenge so i can because you know what simon already said it so if simon says they come on let me just start to do right because there's nothing like putting some action behind what you say you want because when you put that action behind it it's like that that action man right stuff gets done right Something gets, you know, you start blowing up them automatic thoughts, those little ants, that's what I call them, that automatic negative thought system. It's just, they don't come one by one, like, mm -hmm. they come a whole bunch of, if you see one little ant, then you, here's, here comes the whole group of them, you know? And so that's what I, that's the thought I want to leave you guys with, is to have only positive expectations. Know that if you do not like your job, if you're stuck in a J-O-B, and I, I call it J-O-B like that because it could be you're just over broke. You know, you got just enough to pay the bills and then buy a little something and a little something else, but not enough to pay if you were out for six months, not enough to pay your rent for six months. And those are the type of things that we want to be able to start building up is having that money. So if something does happen, another Corona or whatever it is, then we're able to say I'm secure, at least in my home. I have a, play, a roof over my head. You know, I got clothes. I might not be able to buy new clothes, but if it's too wrong or something like that, you ain't going to wear no way. So <laughs> you just saying at home anyway. <laughs> you don't need nothing new. But you guys get what I'm saying. So thank you again, Simon. And uh, I can't wait to collaborate and partner with you next year. This is going to be fun. And um, it's, it's going to be awesome. You guys, we have something in, in motion coming up for, especially if you, I know a lot of you love uh, to have businesses or your own businesses. Well, you still got to know what kind of business should I be in instead of going through 20 different MLMs and I'm not satisfied because this one ain't and that one ain't. It's time to like scale down and figure out what is the vision for my life? What is that thing that I'm supposed to be doing? Where is it that I fit in and where is it that I don't fit in? So you can get there, stay there and be happy. <laughs> Okay, so what's your Facebook page? Um, well, best place to find me is on Salisi Academy. So that's uh, facebook.com forward slash Salisi Academy. That, uh, you can find me there or hit me up at uh, uh, Simon later. But uh, Salisi Academy is probably the best place to find me. All right. I love it. Salisi Academy. Okay. Peace out, you guys. Love you. Have a good one. Thank you. Thank you.